Hello, I'm Toycat, and let me just start by addressing the title of this video and saying no, it's not designed to inspire fear in you and to use that fear to get you to buy my product or service. There are no, you know, sponsorships and, you know, leading you towards something on this channel. These videos are designed to actually inform and educate about important things, such as a big mistake that the majority of people watching this video have probably made. And it's a mistake not in the sense that, like, oh no, you're gonna lose out on so much potential future gains, although that's something we cover on this channel, but instead it's a mistake that will literally lose you money. And to prove that point, what better place to go the McDonald's. I mean, it's the perfect thing for this channel because here is the original McDonald's menu. It had just nine items on it. And as you can see, a hamburger is 15 cents and a cheeseburger is 19. Wow, it was so cheap. But the reason it's 15 cents is because it was like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, right? But no, McDonald's actually opened in 1940. This is their original menu from then. And the fact that, you know, in the last 80 years alone, a burger has gone up from 15 cents to significantly more while the quality, etc., has gone down. How is it that the price has gone up by such a huge amount despite all the other factors uh, you, you know, should suggest that the burger's gone down. It's not McDonald's in particular that's done wrong, it's actually something called inflation. And to define inflation, it's the quantitative measure of the rate at which the average price level of a basket of selected goods and services in an economy increase over a period of time. But to be more interesting than just saying like, hey, that thing, inflation is the way that money, you know, slowly decreases in value. In the same way um, that certain things over time lose value, money has a set rate, although it was much less set, uh, much less set in the past, uh, money has a set rate at which it slowly loses value. Almost like a decay feature, you could see it as. Um, here is the rates in the UK, as you can see. It kind of averages around just below the 5% for most of the last century. It goes up very, very high in the... Um it goes up very high in the, uh, you know, kind of uh, the 70s as well as uh, in the war periods, as you can probably imagine. And uh, right now it sits around the 2 to 3% mark. In the US, it looks something like this. And, uh, you know, this might sound, this is a hard graph to look at. So to take all that interest and combine it, if we take 100 years, if you had, uh, you know, a single, if you, let's say you had, uh, you know, if you wanted to buy something that would cost a dollar in 1910, that, or 1913, that same thing would cost two, <laughs> $22.75 and 23, whatever, or or 70, uh, you know, 22 pounds and 75 because the price of everything has gone up by that amount. Uh, everything costs more as time goes on, and this is something designed by governments. Inflation is actually seen by most governments and most economists around the world as being a mostly good thing. It's not an inherently bad thing, despite the fact that, you know, wouldn't we all like to see 15 cent hamburgers and 19 cent cheeseburgers? It might seem, it's really counterintuitive that, and, and, you know, economists actually do want inflation, and the reason why economists want it is something you can look into, especially if you find that to be interesting, but it is mostly a decision for your central bank of your country. Uh, most countries have separated the monetary policy, inflation and interest rates uh, from the government, so it's not something you really elect. So that's a whole fun thing to look into. But again, if you're an economist, this is interesting. And as someone who likes economics, it's interesting to me. But this video is here to help you. How do you avoid this happening to your money? How do you avoid, uh, you know, effectively, like if we go to Google, uh, you know, if you lose 2% a year on average, which is the current target for most major economies, if you lose 2% every year, then that 100, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, if you times by uh, 0.98, you lose 2%. That's how you can use maths to do it. So then if we take that answer and we times it by, uh, you know, 0.98 again, then the next year we lose another 2% to inflation. Again, everything costs, you know, effectively, well, oops, <laughs> everything costs, um, you know, 2% more. So we effectively had 2% less money. So by the second year, your money's worth $96.04 or 96, you know, fun units and four subunits. And then after another year, it's 94, 92, 90, 88. And basically after enough years, uh, you know, just uh, if it's roughly 31 years, uh, what ends up happening is your money is worth half as much as it was before. This means that if you put your money in a bank account, the key error that I'm trying to talk to you about is that if you put your money in a bank account and you're like, yeah, it's, it's gonna, you know, stay the same and it's gonna even earn a little bit of interest. If you earn less than 2% in interest a year, and most accounts pay like 0.01 now because banks don't need to fight for your um, your custom anymore because everyone needs a bank account these days, so they don't really have to. But um, basically, um, you know, nowadays, uh, you're probably not earning much on your, even your savings account. So if you put money away in a bank account, then you're gonna slowly lose money. It's gonna be real sad. You're gonna end up with, you know, 50 point, uh, you know, 50 pounds worth of spending power in 31 years, which means that effectively, if you are just putting money in a savings account, you are slowly very slowly, losing the value of that money. And again, this actually come, come, come back to like why inflation is 
uh, you know, wanted because the you know it's it's wanted for you to spend your money. Uh, while you can or at least put it into something don't leave your money just in a pile lying around spend it so it can you know, Stimulate the economy economy and make economic growth and all those sorts of things That's why it's wanted That's why they want this to be a thing, but it is something you can combat on a personal level Yes, but also it's a good thing to do because you know Although you know 22 times might seem insane as a thing like oh wow things cost 22 times more than they did a hundred years ago If you look at a country like Venezuela in a single year things have gone up by 1650 four times. A thing that would have cost the dollar last year, you know, in your money, would have cost 1654 this year, and that's, again, it annualizes at much higher. It stopped being tracked after a certain point because it's so, it's so hard to even keep track of hyperinflation once it goes to a certain point. Any savings that you had, uh, you know, at this point in the graph, they're all gone by the time you get over there. It is crazy the level of inflation some countries get to, and that's a, you know, obviously that's a non-functional government, but even the most stable of countries, again, the US and the UK are, you know, pretty stable countries, I think it's fair to say, um, with governmental systems, etc. Even in the most stable of countries, you can see how inflation rates slowly erode the, erode the value of your money over time, um, halving it every 31 years at the target rate, and it often goes above the target rate, sometimes below, which is a economic problem, but not a problem for you. Sometimes money actually deflates, so just by storing money, you it holds it actually gains value, but again, problem for the government, not for you. Um, so given that money usually, it, the target rate is to lose 2% every single year, um, you know, how do you actually counter that? And this is kind of where my video about why you need to invest comes in, uh, but it's even more important because um, one of the things I kind of left out in that video to drill home the point is that, yeah, um, if you, you know, if you, I think I mentioned for 23 years, if you invest a thousand a month, so you take a thousand, uh, you know, a month and you put a thousand in there every month, if you can do that for 23 years, then you'll eventually be a millionaire, right? And that is true, you would be a millionaire, but the value of that million isn't going to be quite the same. Um, as you go oh, up there, I think it's 8.5 is what we use. But, um, you know, uh, you, if, if you invest in stocks a thousand every month, you're going to be a millionaire after, I guess it's like 25 years, I guess it would, would it be. Um, you know, you're going to be a millionaire, very, very close to a millionaire, but the million isn't going to be worth quite the same value. This is why instead of investing your money in a savings account, if it's for anything more than six months to a year, if it's for, uh, you know, an emergency fund, if it's for things that you're going to need to buy very soon and you can't uh, wait out the market, uh, you know, things, then sure, anything that you want to hold on to, especially until retirement, but for more than a year or two or three to buy a house or to buy whatever else, it should go in some form of stocks account. And the reason for that is because if you do so, um, then you're effectively not only getting rid of that inflation, uh, you know, risk, because, you know, realistically speaking, if we just have yeah, yeah. Let, let's make a fair example. If you have, um, you know, you're just 1,000 that you leave aside, um, it says it's worth 7,600. The buying power off that has gone down by half. Again, uh, you know, using this thing before, uh, you know, your 100 is actually worth 50. So your, you know, 80, uh, 7,600 is actually worth 3,800. But 3,800 is a lot better than 500. Or, you know, to actually keep the examples parallel, um, your $100 would become... Your $100 would become, it's just dividing by 10, uh, $760, which is actually $380, but $380 is better than 50. 380 pounds is better than 50 pounds, and that is one of the reasons why it's important to invest your money, again, either in stocks, shares, any form of thing that is not tied to money. Money is a tool used to buy things. Money is a tool that most governments have an interest in you not just sitting on a pile off for so many good reasons for, you know, economic growth for everyone. So yeah, put your money into stocks, which is putting it into a company, letting them invest it and hoping they can, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, use it to do better things than a bank can. Uh, you know, use it to do various different things to try and get an interest rate above 2%. Because if you just, if you got exactly 2% every year, um, then you just end up with enough to cover for inflation. In this case, you wouldn't because the way that works, but uh, you get just enough to cover for inflation. And that is not a thing you do. By leaving your money in a savings account, you are actively losing money every single time, and that's the worst. The reason that's the worst is because you're basically being punished. If you don't know things, again, the series is here to help people with the knowledge because that is basically a punishment for not knowing, uh, you know, the fact, uh, you know, how inflation works. For doing a the correct thing and saving money, even if it's just a hundred every single month or fifty every single month when you get paid, um, or you know, like. By saving the money and then not put, you know, by putting it in a 0% in or 0.1% interest rate bank, you're going to get ludicrously low returns. Like after, 
uh, you know, <laughs> 25 years, you'd have put in $30,000, but you'd only get $100 back from that savings account's interest rates. And 0.1% is high for a lot of banks around the world. I, I, I think uh, the highest I could find in the UK was like 0.5. Although actually there's a new bank doing like 1.35. That's the exciting, like they're the market beating rate, 1.35%. That still gives you just 20% back in return over the period of 25 years because compound interest. Whereas if you put it into the stock market average, which is, you know, between seven and nine, we'll just say eight to be simple. Um, you know, like the stock market return would be 62. If you can put it in something, you know, where you hope to beat that, you can have much better results. Instead of earning 20%, you earn 200%. Because again, compound interest, it's a thing. And compound interest works both ways. You're, uh, you know, by the amount you could be getting every year by investing in. I'm not just going to say stocks in general. So many different things you should be looking into. But the amount that you're gaining uh, you know, every single year can also go the other way. If you, I mean, one, if you pick bad stocks, but two, if you just leave your money lying around, it is losing percentage a, a little bit every single year. This website doesn't let you do minus two, sadly. Like, wow, you must be greater than or equal to zero. But, you know, you understand the point. After 31 years, you lose half your money. After 62 years, you lose... <laughs> <laughs> what would that be? Three quarters of your money. And that means that if you put money away now for your retirement, it just quarters in value. If you put money away in something like this for the equivalent time, like 52 years, it's a this is a silly amount. No one actually has money sitting away for this long. But if you could do the same thing, even $100 a month becomes $2.3 million. <laughs> Jesus. Again, compound interest is insane. $100 a month in 62 years becomes $2.3 mi uh, you know, million dollars. And again, that's that amount of money, but by the cost of the time, it's more like $600,000. But still, your 74000 can become worth 18000 or 600000 It's down to what you do with it. Um, and that's a thing you should look into, man. I, it is, isn't it cool to see like the numbers just grow? Like After your first year, you'll earn $63. After your 10th year, you'll be earning $1,000 a year, just in interest. After your 20th year, it's in the thousands. And then like the last few years is when it really kicks in. You can earn... A decent salary towards the end here even on a hundred dollars a month um by year what is it like 30 years in you're earning a pretty you know like minimum wage salary i'd say in most places um depending on your minimum wage i guess but you know by 40 years in you're earning a healthy salary by 50 years in you're earning uh you know like pretty decent middle class although again inflation at the time means not as good but still my point here is remember uh the more the younger you are the more time you have don't waste the time by making the time take you backwards a step. Use the time to go forwards a step. And actually, just for the fun at the end here, usually these videos are focused and have a beginning point. But I want to see, like, I'm going to live, I'd, I'd guess, another 62 years. Yeah, 62 years seems like it. I'm 24 right now. 62 is a bit optimistic. We'll say, we'll say 58. I'll live until I'm... Uh... <laughs> I live that age, and if I put a thousand in there, which is the it's the easiest example, a thousand a month, it's like hard but like attainable, even for a job where you're only putting two thousand a month, which is a lot, but like it's attainable for most jobs that you are trying to go for right now, not attainable for any job that you might have right now. But anyway, um, if you did that for fifty eight years, one, you'd have sixteen million, and two, you can see how like after ten years, you've already got yourself a healthy salary almost as much as you're putting in yourself, in fact, more than you're putting in yourself, sorry, uh, every single year, after 20 years, you've got 52,000. After 30 years, you've got yourself <laughs> a six-figure salary. Um, after seven, 40 years, you've got yourself more money than most people need to earn in a year. And then by the last year, you're earning a million in interest. You can, you can live off the interest alone, like literally 30 years into this. Um, and that's pretty nutty, actually. You can live off the interest alone, like realistically, like, <laughs> realistically speaking, this if, if you earn 2000 a month in the example, and you can manage to put half of that away, 13 years in, you earn more in interest than you earn at your job. And if that's in a ISA in the UK, or a Roth IRA in America, or whatever tax-free vehicle, or low-tax vehicle, you would pay less tax on that than you would. Which goes back to the tax video. Guess what? Time our videos in together today. But no, um, yeah, just a reminder that when things go well, um... That's really nutty, like 13 years, I would, I was expecting such a higher amount. So yeah, save your money, it's hard to do, but that's why you need it, that's why you need someone to encourage you here to do it. You don't need to do it, it's hard to do, not everyone can do it, only whatever percent can. But I'd like to encourage you to be part of that whatever percent, not for my own benefit, but for yours. 
And maybe because I get some sick pleasure out of improving your life. Yeah, do it. Impro put some money in a savings account. Look at look at ISAs if you live in the UK or rough IRAs or whatever tax friendly savings vehicles that exist in your country. Yeah, do it for do it for the man on the internet wearing a jacket that makes him look like a used car salesman. But no, thank you very much for watching. Hope this video taught you about inflation, at least a little bit, and how it affects you. Um, because again, it's a really fascinating thing. And countries that have had deflation, like Japan, it's a bad thing. They've got to fight. Uh, certain goods deflate over time anyway, like food and electronics. Like uh, inflation, deflation, whether it's necessary or not, is even debated by economists. It's a whole fascinating thing if you care about this. I know most people don't. So the thing you need to care about is getting yourself that amount of money, which you can do in just 50 years. I mean, realistically. I think most people are happier a lot lower down the spectrum. But anyway, thank you for watching, because I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Oh, I have to stop my own videos on this channel. <laughs>